Welcome back to my channel and my first video of 2021 actually. It's been so long since I've shown my face on the YouTube space. I think probably last October was my last video and just so much has happened since then. I guess with everything coming back out of lockdown, the world just started opening up very, very quickly and there was just a lot of things to do. So my time just got um, extremely busy towards the end of last year. So for the first video back this year, I thought I'd talk about how to set yourself up for a very successful 2021 and just basically discuss um, all the ways that I keep myself organized and um, how to form good habits and good routines and break bad habits and things like that. So today is Sunday and it's usually a day that I like to spend relaxing but also getting organized and just cleaning and tidying and making sure that my space is very clean because um, I feel that the state of my environment has a big impact on my ability to focus and work. So I just like to take today to get everything cleaned up and organized for the week ahead. Also just plan out a few things. So I will show you all the strategies and things that I use to get myself set up. So I do feel like I'm a little bit behind the eight ball because we are already two weeks into January. So it seems a bit weird to be doing a habits and resolutions video now, but I also sort of feel like it's the point of the month where the whole new year's resolution hype is sort of starting to wear off and all the resolutions that we've committed to making, the effort for them is starting to feel a bit fatiguing, like it's starting to get a bit challenging and there's been no obvious payoff or um, progress from the effort we've been making as well. So this is the part of forming new habits that can be really, really challenging because it's sort of at the point where it's starting to get hard and the reward isn't obvious yet, but it's also the point where you need to keep pushing and keep on making the effort to get the rewards later. So I'm sort of hoping that by bringing this video in now, it will sort of re-inspire you and help you feel a little bit more motivated to keep continuing on with those habits and things just starting to feel a little bit hard at this point because yeah it definitely takes a little bit more than two weeks to form a new habit. So to start off with I thought I would just talk about some resources that are really really helpful to have with organization. Um, this is going to be so incredibly obvious but a yearly planner. I get one of these every single year and I honestly don't understand how people live without one. It's just a really great tool to write everything down so that you know what's going on. So at the start of every week, I just take some time to put in all everything that's happening for the week ahead. So all my recurring um, client sessions for personal training, any appointments that I have coming up, um, work meetings as well, and any other work shifts for my other job as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write some of those things in that I know I've got on. So another thing that I like to make note of as well is when I'm doing my gym sessions. So um, one thing that I get asked quite a lot is how do you make gym a part of your routine and how do you stay motivated with it? And it literally is embedding it in your daily routine. So by dedicating a specific time to getting it done, um, you sort of make the commitment to yourself and it's just another thing on your to-do list to get done. I actually will go into a lot more detail on how to actually build that into your routine and just make it something um, how to seamlessly really blend it into your life. So I will go into a lot more detail on how you can make it a lot more structured, um, but that is another thing that I make note of in my planner as well. Um, so this one is from Papier, Papier, I think you call it. So it has like the week out like that. And I haven't used this brand before. This is actually the first year that I've bought from them. Um, but I really, really like it because at the start of every month, it has like a little template like that and you can rewrite the goals for the month. You've got a to-do list for the month, important dates and a wish list. And I really, really like that feature because, um, it just gives you the opportunity to set really clear intentions for the month ahead. So yeah, that for me is one of those, um, tools and resources that is just a non-negotiable. Underneath that, I also have this massive calendar, but that is a um, Kmart one. And basically this is my um, content calendar. So in all these spots, I've just got down post ideas because I run uh, two pages. I've got the uh, my personal Instagram page. I also play a big role in running the Evolve Performance Method Instagram page. 
and we're also trying to have a bit more of a presence on Facebook this year as well so um, that is another thing to keep track of so I just put down all my post ideas I do a big brainstorm at the start of the month and just work out a rough schedule of when I want to post certain things um, I know that's very niche use for a, a calendar like this but so this is another really good tool that you can use just to plan out your daily life. It doesn't have to be a content thing at all. And down the side as well, it's got to do monthly goals and notes as well. So in terms of being able to achieve your goals and actually having it in the forefront of your mind, another common tip that I hear a lot is to just have your goals visible all the time and just have them somewhere where you can um, see them a lot, where you can read over them. I also like to visualize my goals as well. So I actually did this um, on New Year's Eve. I just redid my vision board and a vision board is something I always have up. I'll just show you it now. So this is my vision board that I've got up at the moment above my desk. And I like it because I literally can see all of my goals but then it also looks like really nice art as well so i do like it as a creative activity too so for me instead of having my goals written and just somewhere where i see them every day i like to have a picture that represents each of my different goals so for me this is my way of being able to remind myself of what my goals are so yeah when i'm sitting at my desk and i look up it's literally it's right there there's no escaping it so I really love having visual reminders and things that represent my goals. So when doing this, I do, some pictures do carry over onto some vision boards that I still resonate with. Um, but when building the board as a whole, I sort of look at the goals that I've set and I try and think of a picture that represents that. Um, and I go onto Pinterest and I just search for the things and if there's any pictures that I think represent that really nicely and just will jog that mental memory. That's how I sort of select them. And there are certain categories. So in this corner, that's kind of like my um, general health. So as you can see, looking after my skin, my nails, my body in general. Moving up into this corner, that's kind of like my fitness um, one. So particular individuals who inspire me. And then moving across here is kind of represents career and stuff for me. And then moving down is just other career stuff. So food photography, um, down the bottom of the board, we've got more things to do with studying and like work ethics i will always just do a board that just represents that year as a whole that's what i want that year to look like and yeah that's pretty much all it is to it okay so now i thought i'd talk about something i get asked about quite a lot which is how to make fitness a part of your routine how to be really solid and really consistent with it i've developed a really um consistent attitude and routine with gym that has taken a while to really form solidly but i'll just touch on some of the tips that i implemented to help me get to the point where i am today so my uh, biggest tips when it comes to being really consistent with the gym number one is have a program so have structure so the program has to be based on your goals so figuring out whether it's discussing it with a friend sitting down with a coach figuring out exactly what you want to achieve from the gym and then basing your program around the achievement of those goals so what exercises what intensity do you need to apply to be able to achieve that goal and then also considering the timeline that you want to achieve it in as well if you're happy to achieve the goal say over in a year's time you might prefer a more slower approach where you only go attend the gym maybe three sessions a week there's no right or wrong way of how you want to go about achieving your goal um, but making sure that it is actually in line with that if you want to achieve your goal a lot faster than a year say in three or six months then you might need to apply a bit more volume and intensity at the time so going to four or five sessions in the week so once you've determined what your goals are and the time frame that you want, that's when you can sort of design the program upon achieving those goals. And proper programming does allow you to achieve your goal faster. So once you have your program sorted, you have structure. Once you have structure, you have direction as well. So from there, it's just about executing it. So the way in which to execute it is to figure out which days you can perform those actions on. So they also have to suit the other things that you value in life. So whether that's family time, your career, your studying, 
um, it all has to tie in somewhere. The more resistance there is to performing an action, the harder it is to implement that habit. So really trying to find the optimal time where you can get to the gym and get it done. Some people love training in the morning. You just sort of get up, you get it done for the day, and then it's you tick the box off and you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. And um, it can also supply really good energy, really good endorphins to get you through the day, whether you're working or studying. Other people feel absolutely dead to the world in the morning and that's okay I'm like that sometimes too um, I always used to be a morning trainer and now I don't mind the evenings like I probably will lean towards midday or even the evening just depends on what I've got on for the day usually in the evening you you're awake by that point you'd hope you've had quite a few meals for the day so you've also got food in your system which is giving you energy so you might perform better in the evening so whatever your preference you just got to find the one that suits your energy levels better and just roll with it there's no right or wrong way of doing it it's whatever suits you the best so i would start by looking at your week as a whole putting in the non-negotiables so when you've got shifts for work when you have classes at uni when you have appointments and things like that just putting that all down first and then from that looking at the space that you've got available from determining if you if your energy is better in the morning how early do you need to get up in the morning in order to get a session done and then get to where you need to go or if your energy is better in the evening what nights would suit you best after work to go and get a session done it's just finding that time scheduling it in and making the commitment to yourself when you simply say i'll go tomorrow at some stage some stage is so amb ambiguous like when when exactly is that and it makes it very very easy to push back as well but if you choose a specific time and really commit to it that just increases the likelihood of you showing up at that time and just getting it done as time goes on and you keep showing up at those same times it just becomes second nature to you and then suddenly you don't have to put a lot of effort into getting yourself organized into driving yourself there because it's a part of the routine and it's something that you just do and especially when you start noticing the the results the progress the rewards of being so consistent it becomes even easier as well and when you enjoy the program you enjoy exercising and the type of exercise that you're doing it makes it so much easier to commit because the outcome of this habit is enjoyable and it's satisfying and it's rewarding so that's what signals to your brain that it's a good thing to keep doing just being able to show up to a session challenge your body it's just developed this mental resilience that can be applied across so many different areas of life and it's just such a great resilience tool basically it's really empowering feeling strong and it just has so many other benefits instead of just improving how you look so overall new routines are really hard when you get started because there is a lot of effort required to put it in motion to get it really solid once you start being really consistent with it and it becomes a bit more natural feels like just something that you do that's when it will start falling into place a little bit more as well and i guess just um accepting that it's not going to be perfect some action is better than no action at all so you've just got to fail forward just keep putting one foot in front of the other no matter if it's perfect it doesn't have to be it's just action through repetition is what makes it a habit so on that point of habits, actually, there is um, a couple that I am trying to implement this year as well, and that is reading before bed. A book that I really recommend that you read is actually this one. So if you're going to read any book this year, definitely make it this one. It basically talks about how a habit is formed, the science in the brain and how to create new ones and break bad ones. It basically just covers a lot of concepts that we kind of know, but it just makes it really super streamlined and it just makes a lot of sense. Um, even if you're not a big reader, this is really, really easy to read, just the, the language and the style of it. It um, just makes it super, super simple. So definitely have a read of this one. It's incredibly enlightening and it just gives you really actionable steps on how to actually form good habits as well. So in terms of um, other routines and structures and habits that I'm wanting to build, I will probably do an updated version of this video um, at the end of Feb or the beginning of March when I go back to uni. Right now it's kind of like the calm before the storm. So there's a bit happening, but it's not as hectic as it usually is. So I'll really have to be super organized at that point. So I'll probably do an updated video to show you how I get organized for the uni and the study year as well. So they are pretty much the major tips and points that I have for today. I guess when it comes to setting goals, like it's one thing to declare a goal and to state a desire to achieve it, but the real success 
of achieving a goal lies within your processes. So all the habits and things that you do daily, they all need to support the achievement of that goal. So making sure that everything that you do aligns with what you're wanting to achieve. So if there's any bad habits that prevent you from moving towards your goal, really identifying them and try and replacing them with the good habits that will move you towards your goal as well. So at the end of the day, yes, it's good to plan things out to ensure that you're producing the highest quality work so that things are well thought out and are more efficient. I love to spend a lot of time like thinking and planning, but Planning only gets you so far, it's acting on it that is the real measure of progress. So being caught up in that whole perfectionist mindset and just waiting until things are perfect or you're at the perfect moment, that mindset can be so detrimental to our potential. And we just end up wasting so much time waiting for a perfect moment that really doesn't exist. So planning is good, but acting on your intentions is what allows you to progress. So whatever you do, just keep failing forward. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.